Hello. I'm going to spend some time with you today discussing diagnosis procedures for a diesel engine that's not operating properly. We'll look at the various conditions that can occur with a diesel and the step-by-step -step procedures for correcting each situation. We're not going to cover diagnosing conditions involving such components as rod bearings, rings, pistons, or any other mechanical components. That type of diagnosis is the same for diesel and gasoline engines. We'll stick strictly to those conditions affecting only diesel engines. This program is presented slightly different from the other ProTech video disc programs you've seen. It will not run continuously by itself from beginning to end. I'm going to continue talking to you for a few more minutes just to cover some basic information. Then I'll stop talking and the program will return to the index. You'll then see the index which lists the diagnosis conditions presented in this program with a code for each condition. Whichever code you then press, the diagnosis condition for that code will begin. As soon as that diagnosis condition and procedure is completed, the program will return to the index. In this manner, you'll be able to select the exact diesel condition and diagnosis procedure that you want to see. You can watch just one and skip the rest, or you can watch them all. The only thing is that the program will not run continuously. It will start and stop according to what you select. Side two of this program, which has additional diesel diagnosis conditions, is presented in the same manner. Chevrolet presently uses three different diesel engines in passenger cars. The 5.7 liter V8, the 4.3 liter V6, and the 1.8 liter four-cylinder. During this program, we'll be demonstrating the diagnosis procedures on a 5.7 liter. However, the diagnosis procedures are presented in as generic a manner as possible, so they apply to all diesel engines. Of course, this isn't possible for all the procedures because of engine system differences. In those cases where there is a large exception, especially with the 1.8 liter engine, the exception is pointed out. Also, during this program, special tools will be required for some of the diagnosis procedures refer to the service manual for the special tool numbers for the model car you are servicing. There are just two other things that I want to remind you of before we start. Whenever you're servicing a diesel engine, always remember to install an air crossover cover anytime the air cleaner assembly has been removed. And whenever you remove the air crossover, make sure you install the appropriate screen covers in the intake manifold openings. As you can see, we've removed the hood from this car. This is only to make it easier for you to see the step-by-step -step procedures as they're performed. Okay, I think we're ready to begin the diagnosis portion of the program. The program will now return to the index for side one, and you can begin by selecting one of the diagnosis conditions listed there. If the engine will not crank, the diagnosis is pretty much straightforward. It's most likely an electrical problem. Check the battery condition. If two batteries are used, check both of them. This one appears to be at least 50 to 60 percent charged, as indicated by the green dot. However, the most accurate check of a battery's condition is to perform a load test. If the batteries are fully charged, check the battery connections. Make sure the connections are clean, with no sign of corrosion, and that they are tight. Check the connections at the engine block and at the starter solenoid. If all connections are tight, turn the crankshaft to make sure the engine isn't seized. If it is, you have a mechanical problem to deal with. If it isn't, check for an inoperative starter. Check that the voltage to the starter and starter solenoid is within specification. If it's not, check for a bad cable. If it is within specification, the problem is the starter. Remove the starter for a bench repair. When you check battery condition, if the battery or batteries are discharged, check the condition and tension on the generator drive belt. If the belt and tension are okay, inspect the generator wiring for faults. Check all connections for tightness and cleanliness. If all the wires and connections check out, Try starting the car with a boost, and then check the generator output. If the output is not within specification, remove and repair the generator. Don't forget 
that the 4.3 liter engine uses one wide belt called a serpentine belt to drive all the engine accessories except a vacuum pump on air conditioned models. Check both the condition of the belt and the operating range of the drive belt tensioner. Summing up, for an engine that will not crank, first check the condition of the batteries. If they're fully charged, check the battery cables and their points of connection and check that the starter is operational. If the batteries are discharged, check the charging system. Let's look at a condition where the engine cranks slowly, will not start. Since cranking speed is extremely critical for a diesel to start, either hot or cold, it's important to determine whether an engine is cranking at a normal speed or slower than normal. Some tachometers are not accurate at cranking speed. To find out if your tachometer is accurate, compare its reading against actual cranking speed. Here's how to determine actual cranking speed. Disconnect the injection pump fuel solenoid lead at the injection pump or the harness connector. On this engine, it's the pink wire. Remove any glow plug and install a compression gauge into the cylinder. Depress the pressure release valve on the compression gauge. Have an assistant crank the engine. After three seconds, begin counting the number of puffs at the compression gauge that occur in the next 10 seconds. Multiply the number of puffs in the 10 second period by 12, and that is the cranking speed, or RPM of the engine. If the engine is actually cranking slowly, and by that I mean minimum cranking speed, but it won't start, check the electrical system. Check the battery condition. If two batteries are used, check both of them. This one appears to be at least 50 to 60 percent charged as indicated by the green dot. However, the most accurate check of a battery's condition is to perform a load test. If the batteries are fully charged, check the battery connections. Make sure the connections are clean with no sign of corrosion and that they are tight. Check the connections at the engine block and at the starter solenoid. When you check battery condition, if the battery or batteries are discharged, check the condition and tension on the generator drive belt. If the belt and tension are okay, inspect the generator wiring for faults. Check all connections for tightness and cleanliness. If all the wires and connections check out, try starting the car with a boost and then check the generator output. If the output is not within specification, remove and repair the generator. Don't forget that the 4.3 liter engine uses one wide belt called a serpentine belt to drive all the engine accessories except a vacuum pump on air conditioned models. Check both the condition of the belt and the operating range of the drive belt tensioner. If everything on the electrical system checks out, the engine may be filled with the wrong viscosity engine oil, which is causing it to crank slowly. This is especially important in cold weather. Drain the crankcase and refill with engine oil of the required viscosity. If you encounter a condition where a diesel engine cranks normally but won't start, the first thing to do is to make sure that it's not something as simple as the customer using an incorrect starting procedure. Try starting the car using the recommended starting procedure for a diesel engine as published in the owner's manual. If this should turn out to be the cause, advise the operator on the correct procedure. If it's not because of an incorrect starting procedure, remove the air cleaner assembly and install the air crossover cover. Have an assistant turn the ignition switch to the run position and listen for the fuel solenoid in the injection pump to click. If the solenoid doesn't click, leave the ignition switch in run and connect a voltmeter to the wire at the fuel solenoid and to ground. There should be a minimum of nine volts present. If there is less than nine volts, refer to the electrical diagnosis section of the appropriate service manual for the cause. If the correct voltage is present, the fuel solenoid may have to be replaced. If the fuel solenoid clicked when the ignition switch was turned to run, it's not at fault. The engine either lacks fuel or the mixture is not hot enough to ignite you must determine which condition is causing the problem. Remove one of the glow plugs from the engine. Depress the throttle partway 
and crank the engine for five seconds. Check if any fuel vapors come out of the glow plug hole. If there are no vapors, it means that there is no fuel getting to the cylinder. Let's begin checking the fuel system at the filter. A caution here. Whenever you loosen any fuel line, make sure any spraying fuel is directed away from any possible sources of ignition. Also, when checking fuel flow on the 4.3 liter, you don't have to crank the engine. Since the 4.3 has an electric fuel pump, just turn the ignition to run. Okay, let's loosen the line coming out of the fuel filter and going to the injection pump. Crank the engine and check whether fuel sprays out of the fitting at the filter. No fuel. Then tighten the outlet line and loosen the inlet line at the filter. This is the line coming from the fuel pump. Crank the engine. If fuel does spray from the line, the filter is plugged and should be replaced. If, however, fuel does not spray out of the fuel line, the cause is something else. The next thing in line to check is for an inoperative fuel pump. Remove the inlet hose to the fuel pump. Connect a hose to the pump from a separate container that contains fuel. Loosen the line coming from the pump that goes to the fuel filter and crank the engine. If there is no spray of fuel from the pump fitting when the engine is cranked, replace the pump. On the 4.3 liter, however, check for voltage to the fuel pump before replacing the pump. If fuel sprays from the fitting, the fuel pump is not at fault. Check for a kinked hose. If the fuel hose is okay, all the way back to the tank, the fault is most likely a restricted filter in the fuel tank. Let's back up to when you were checking the fuel filter and had just loosened the line going from the filter to the injection pump. If fuel sprays out of the filter, then you know that the fuel is getting to the injection pump. So the problem is either with the injection pump or the fuel return system. You can quickly check the fuel return lines. Disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If it starts and runs, there is a restriction in the fuel return lines. The fuel line restriction as a cause of the problem applies only to the 5.7 and 4.3 liter engines. Because of the different type of pump used on the 1.8 liter engine, it will not be affected by a return line restriction. When you check for a return line restriction on either the 5.7 or the 4.3 liter, if there is no restriction, remove the ball check connector from the top of the injection pump and see if it is plugged. Push on the ball to see if it moves freely. If it's plugged, the cause could be that the governor weight retainer ring in the injection pump has failed. If this is the case, then just cleaning the ball check connector won't solve the problem. The governor weight retainer ring must also be replaced. However, if the ball check connector isn't plugged, the only component left that can be at fault is the injection pump. Remove the injection pump for repair. These then are the steps to take if there aren't any vapors coming out of the glow plug hole when you crank the engine. If, however, there are fuel vapors coming from the glow plug hole, remove the remainder of the glow plugs and crank the engine again. If there are vapors coming from each cylinder, the mixture is either not hot enough or the fuel is bad. Sniff the vapors. See if you can smell gasoline. If not, collect some of the fuel and inspect it for the presence of water. A final check on this is to disconnect the inlet line at the fuel pump. Connect a hose to the pump from a container filled with known good diesel fuel. If the engine starts, the fuel is contaminated flush the fuel system and refill the tank. If the fuel is okay, the next check is why the fuel mixture isn't hot enough to ignite. We'll begin by checking the glow plugs and the glow plug control system. Check the glow plugs by connecting an ammeter in series with the two wires leading from the output side of the glow plug relay to the glow plugs. If you use an induction type meter, 
You can check both wires at the same time. Operate the system and note the reading. If the reading is less than specified, check the wires individually to determine which bank of glow plugs is responsible. A low reading for either bank means that one or more glow plugs in that bank is not operating. Check the individual glow plug leads by connecting the ammeter in series with the wire that feeds the glow plug. Operate the system and note the reading on the ammeter. Repeat the procedure for each glow plug. For those cylinders that have a reading of less than normal, check for continuity through the harness by disconnecting the lead from the glow plug and connecting a 12 volt test light from the connector to ground. Operate the glow plug system. If the test light goes on, the harness is okay. Replace the glow plug. If the light does not go on, check the harness. If the harness checks out okay, or if when you check the individual leads to the glow plugs, the readings were normal, check the glow plug control system. There are basically two glow plug systems used on the 5.7 and 4.3 liter engines for Chevrolet passenger cars between 1980 and 1983. These systems are very similar with minor variations between them. One uses a thermal controller to control glow plug temperature and the other uses a diesel engine control module to control the glow plug temperature. Which system is used depends on the body style. Uh, for 1984, the system has been changed. We'll go through one of the pre-1984 systems. However, if you're checking out a glow plug control system for any model year, refer to the service manual for detailed information on that particular system. Okay, the first thing to check is the glow plug relay. Turn the ignition switch to the run position. Listen for the glow plug relay to begin clicking on and off. If you hear the relay operating, that is clicking on and off, check for voltage at the dark blue black wire output connection on the glow plug relay. The voltage is turned on and off as the relay operates and consequently the test light should be going on and off if the relay is operating. If the light does not go on and off, then voltage is not present at this terminal. Move over to the input terminal, which is at the red wire connection. If voltage is present at this terminal, replace the relay. However, if there is no voltage present at the red input lead, check the circuit between the battery and the glow plug relay. If when you check the dark blue black output connection of the glow plug relay, the light remains on steady, replace the glow plug relay and all the glow plugs. Refer to the electrical diagnosis section of the service manual to determine why the glow plug relay failed. That completes the check for the glow plug relay operating with the ignition position to run. Let's back up to the point where we turn the ignition to run and see what to do if the relay is not operating. If you cannot hear the relay operating, check for the presence of voltage between the two circuit pins of the relay as designated in the service manual for the particular system you're checking. If voltage is present, replace the relay. If voltage is not present between the two circuit pins of the relay, the controller or control module, depending on the glow plug control system, is not sending a signal to the relay. The fault may be with the controller or in the circuit feeding the controller. Refer to the electrical diagnosis section of the service manual to determine the cause. Also, on the system using a control module, relay ground is controlled by the module. Check the black ground wire. That completes checking the glow plug control system for the 5.7 or the 4.3 liter engines. Now let's look at checking the system for the 1.8 liter engine. The glow plug control system for the 1.8 liter engine is different than for either the 5.7 liter or the 4.3 liter. So if you suspect this system when the engine cranks but won't start, the procedure for checking it out is a bit different too. For example, you can't check the glow plugs in the car as you can for the other two diesels. You have to remove the glow plug from the engine 
and then check for continuity across the plug terminals and body. If there is no continuity, the heater wire is broken and the glow plug must be replaced. This system has two glow plug relays. To test either glow plug relay, first remove the glow plug relay cover. Disconnect both relays and apply battery voltage to this connection. Use an ohmmeter and make a continuity check across these two terminals. If there is no indication of continuity, replace the relay. One more item to check in this glow plug system is the dropping resistor. Check for continuity across these two terminals. If there is no continuity, replace the resistor. If the glow plugs and the glow plug control system are operating properly, the problem could be injection pump timing. Loosen the injection pump. Move it one way or the other very slightly and tighten it again. Try starting the engine. If it still doesn't start, loosen the pump again, move it, tighten it, and try starting the engine. Continue moving the pump, trying to start the engine after each move. Just make sure you tighten the pump before trying to start it. If the engine starts, time the pump as specified in the service manual. If it's not the timing, perform a compression check. Compression is critical on a diesel engine. It's also possible that the engine is cranking slower than normal. A slow cranking speed is another reason for not enough heat being produced in the cylinders because some tachometers are not accurate at cranking speed. To find out if your tachometer is accurate, compare its reading against actual cranking speed. You can determine cranking speed in the following manner. Since we've just completed a compression check, the fuel solenoid lead should be disconnected and the compression gauge installed in one of the cylinders. Depress the pressure release valve on the compression gauge. Have an assistant crank the engine. After three seconds, begin counting the number of puffs that occur in the next 10 seconds. Multiply the number of puffs in the 10 second period by 12, and that is the cranking speed or RPM of the engine. One last point on this particular condition. If you're servicing a 1.8 liter and you've determined that fuel is reaching the cylinders, one thing to consider is the valve clearance. Because the 1.8 uses adjustable tappets, the valve adjustments are critical and should be checked. Whichever engine you're servicing, if you've done all the diagnosis in a careful, step-by-step -step manner, the problem should be solved. If you're servicing an engine that starts but will not continue to run at idle, the first thing to check is the slow idle adjustment. Adjust the idle screw to specification and see if that solves the problem. If the cause isn't the slow idle adjustment, check if the fast idle solenoid is operating correctly. When the engine is started cold, the fast idle solenoid should move to hold the injection pump lever in the fast idle position. To check this, turn the engine off and turn the ignition switch to run. Disconnect and reconnect the fast idle solenoid, checking for it to operate. If the solenoid does operate, start the engine and adjust the fast idle to specification. If the solenoid is not operating, check for voltage to the solenoid. If voltage is present, replace the solenoid. If voltage is not present, check the operation of the engine temperature switch. If the switch is OK, check the wiring for the power feed to the solenoid. If there's nothing wrong with the wiring, replace the fast idle solenoid. If the slow idle adjustment and the fast idle solenoid adjustment check out, the cause is most likely air in the fuel system or a restricted fuel return system. You can make both of these checks at the same time using a piece of plastic hose. Disconnect the fuel return line from the fuel hose near the front of the engine. Connect the piece of plastic hose, which is routed to a metal container, to the fuel return line. Crank the engine. If there is air in the system, 
you'll see the air bubbles in the plastic hose. If fuel flows through the plastic hose without air bubbles and the engine idles normally, there is a restriction in the fuel return lines. A restricted fuel return system as the cause of the problem applies only to the 5.7 and the 4.3 liter engines. Because of a different type of pump used on the 1.8 liter engine, it's not affected by a return line restriction. When you check for a return line restriction on either the 5.7 or the 4.3 liter, if there is no restriction, remove the ball check connector from the top of the injection pump and see if it's plugged. Push on the ball to see if it moves freely. If it's plugged, the cause could be that the governor weight retainer ring in the injection pump has failed. If this is the case, then just cleaning the ball check connector won't solve the problem. The governor weight retainer ring must also be replaced. The next thing in line to check is for an inoperative fuel pump. Remove the inlet hose to the fuel pump. Connect a hose to the pump from a separate container that contains fuel. Loosen the line coming from the pump that goes to the fuel filter and crank the engine. On the 4.3 liter, just turn the ignition to run. Make sure that any fuel that sprays out of the fitting is directed away from any source of ignition. If there is no spray of fuel from the fitting when the engine is cranked, replace the pump. On the 4.3 liter, however, check for voltage to the fuel pump before replacing the pump. If nothing's wrong with the fuel pump, it's possible that the fuel is gasoline instead of diesel fuel. Or if it is diesel fuel, it may be contaminated. Remove a glow plug and crank the engine for five seconds. There should be fuel vapors coming from the glow plug hole. Sniff the vapors. See if you can smell gasoline. If not, collect some of the fuel and inspect it for the presence of water. Also, when you disconnected the inlet line to the fuel pump and connected a hose from a container filled with known good diesel fuel a few minutes ago, if the engine started and ran correctly, you would know at that point that the fuel is contaminated. Flush the fuel system and refill the tank. There's also a possibility that the glow plugs are not cycling properly to provide the correct afterglow while the engine is running. This can be checked quite easily. With the ignition switch in the run position, use either an induction voltmeter or a 12 volt test light to check the glow plug relay output. If the system is operating properly, you should see a constantly cycling voltage output from the relay. If the voltage isn't cycling, refer to the electrical diagnosis section of the service manual. There is one unique point to consider only if you're servicing a 1.8 liter engine. If you've determined that the fuel is reaching the cylinders okay, check the valve clearance. Because the 1.8 liter uses adjustable tappets, the valve adjustments are critical. However, remember this applies only to the 1.8 and not the 5.7 or 4.3 liter engines. If everything has been okay up to now, the last component to suspect is the injection pump. Remove the injection pump for repair.